And when we look at the Sapphire project in their chamber environment, we see the exact same dots in the hemispheric lines, north, south, and the equatorial bands. Ulysses showing our solar wind is decreasing. And on this phase shift, there's going to be an energetic release. The Chinese have studied the sun and the moon for thousands of years. They've broken it down and encoded it into 36 weapons the gods used to protect humanity. Left, Yunlong, low voltage current stream, cosmic ray bombardment, clouds on our planet affecting agriculture and society. Right, high current stream called the Fenglong, meaning wind dragon, solar wind, which means solar activity at high levels. I'm starting to decode all 36. They do show pinch patterns, zeta pinches, bulge currents in the plasma stream. And when we come down into the cosmic ray forecast for solar cycle 25, it's going to be 19% higher than this cycle, which was already up 14%. Can we correlate Chinese mythology with true events on the planet? Ho Yi, 2170 BC, charcoal rubbing, showing the interconnected plasma fillings overlapping. We see this in the Sapphire Project. We see this in plasma globes. And then we see it on something that's 4,000 years old in a stone carving. It's termed the 4,200 year event, 4.2K event. Crow. And while you're watching, please remember to subscribe to Adapt 2030. It is ingrained. So let's take a look at the iconography. How would they represent this in an actual painting? A look at the Mawang Dui silk banners in the Han Dynasty. Looking about 1800 years ago on that, this is the representation of the charcoal rubbing that they have, Fu Sang tree. This is supposed to be the depiction of the story of Ho Yi shooting nine suns out of the heaven. Center of the tree, intertwining plasma currents. Now the sun and the crow, we need to go back to 2170 BC. These crows were represented as either Filamentary plasma coming out of the sun or actual CMEs coming off of the sun. Something energetic particle wise guaranteed is a representation of this. Now you have to ask, is it a legend or is it true? So 2170 BC, we just go back in the 4,200 year event shortened to the 4.2 K event. One of the most severe climatic events of the Holocene period, extreme drought, wiping out culture after culture. I've circled it here in orange. A little bit to the left, you can see the 8.2K event. We are in the blue box. Look how far below our temperatures are. And you've been told that it's the warmest our planet's been. I disagree totally with that. Even in the last 10,000 years, we're at one of the lowest temperature averages. We're barely above slipping back into a prolonged cold event, which would be a multi-century grand solar minimum. And this drought and this climate change are responsible for wiping out almost every culture at that time and dispersing peoples across the planet that lived through this. So yes, this is a true event. Now let's take a look again. Ho E off the rock carving. Left plasma globe filaments. Do you see any similarity? Let me zoom it in. Yeah, you can start to see those streamers crossing in this woven pattern. Have come up with to replicate what's seen in ancient history right now. You can see that woven pattern that appears through the plasma. And here it is. Multi-millennia old stone carvings matching with modern plasma physics in the lab. Let's put those three together. Now, if you were going to try to preserve a society and you were going to ingrain this in all of the religious aspects that would be passed down for thousands of years, what other branches of the religion would you encode this into? Well, we look at these 36 weapons used by the gods to protect humanity. In Chinese, it's called San Chi Liu Zhi Shi. Now you can divide these into two sets of 18. One set is the Yunlong on the rainy dragon grand solar minimum side and the other 18 represent the strong solar wind high solar activity side. And when you set these into a line in a certain order, it creates the story 
of the currents powering, different zeta pinches, bulges in plasma currents. I'm trying to decipher all of these 36 right now. I've come up with the first eight with the representations in the heavens of what we're seeing with plasma specifically. These pinch currents are represented in different ways and in different intensities and I just am trying to work it out what the intensity levels is and how you put these from 1 to 18 in a row. Taking a visit to another couple temples this weekend. Zeta pinches, of course, represented. They knew about Birkeland currents. They knew about plasma cosmology. They knew exactly what was going on with the physics of plasma. Speaking of that, this is an amazing book here. Anthony Peratt's book. I highly suggest diving into this one and taking a look. As well as visiting the Sapphire Project to see what they have done with their lab. Recreating ancient history in a chamber. Now the Chinese have been following the sun for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. It is center to the culture itself. Left is the sun, right is the moon. Now they also knew about primer fields. Now if you're going to try to warn a society for the future, you're going to absolutely put this in the largest place visible to make sure that it always stays and always is passed down when they build a new temple. On the outside of the walls, you're going to see exactly this time and time and time and time and time again. These dragons are the currents. Plasma streamers going up. Left is a high activity sun. Right is a grand solar minimum. You can see how very different they are with the intensity coming off. This is how they represented current density and voltage. 4,000 years ago, enter the Sapphire Project in these temples. I was shocked after I saw the Sapphire's images here. Temple left, Matsu Temple. This is the cloud dragon. They actually talk about a phase shift in the sun where the color of the sun changes dimmer. Ushering in more clouds, that's why the water is pouring out of the mouth of the dragon. I'll zoom in a bit so you can see what happens with the sun. But in the bottom, we have the wind dragon, the Fonglong, which is high solar activity, high society, a lot of agricultural development, art, literature. But when you look at what happens in the sapphire environment in their chamber, they can replicate the exact same things that's shown in these temples. Now we're getting real interesting here. Notice the dots on the sun. Left is the active sun, right is the water dragon pouring that onto the sun, extinguishing the power, reducing the power, changing the color. Even notice the color change in there. And this is standard whenever you go into a temple. This is standard. You're going to see the same thing again and again and again. So there's a different Matsu temple that I went to. These are on the walls. Left wall is... Then when you go inside of these Matsu temples... You're going to get in and on the left wall is the top photo. There's 15 of these deity figures going down and the sun is in a different state than it is on the right wall with another 15 figures. There's a total of 30 of them. This is a time measurement. I really believe that these 30 are divided by 12 degree arcs in the way that our planet transits through or our galaxy transits through or... Our sun transits through the heavens. They've marked it out with this 12 degree difference, which ushers in different electrical fields. And I'll bring you right over to the Sapphire Project. Check out this video. It shows everything I'm talking about for you. It talks about these anode tufts spin. Those are the little nodules that you see made of light. Sometimes they would spin around the pole. Other times they would spin around the equator. And then putting these two side by side, you can clearly see what I'm getting at here. The top is the low solar activity. The bottom is higher solar activity. You can see the number of dots is changing and it's variable in the hemisphere. Equatorial band is where this changes in the numerical dot values seem to be across the Matsu temples. And then we get into the Sapphire Project and you can see how it takes the northern hemisphere or the equatorial bands now, you have to use a little imagination going back and looking in these temples here. So instead of having a little rock dot that doesn't make sense, let's take one of the sapphire images and overlay it. That's what the sun would look like with the Unlong extinguishing it. Again, this is an, a representation of 
the Birkeland currents, one of them overcharging or overpowering the other one, there's a specific phase change that ushers in more galactic cosmic rays, more water. And this is how they would show you something like this thousands of years ago. But now we know exactly what it's all about with these anode cathode displays. So let's put all three together here. Top Matsu Temple, bottom stone carving, all of them in low solar activity phase, and then the dot center below the dragon, that is from Sapphire. There's a direct match there. They were warning us and explaining to us these go in cycles. And instead of, let's just take a couple Sapphire images here and dump them right into where the sun should be. Or we can go side by side. This is what the ancients were trying to represent, this phase shift in different states of our sun's electrical output. So coming to the forward age right now, Ulysses did several orbits around the sun. And what it found was solar wind decreasing and cosmic rays increasing. The solar winds are diminishing. So in 1998, it was at 100%. And then 2018, it's supposed to be at 40%. So approximately every 10 years, it's losing 30%. Please support my work on Patreon. My next video is going to be about the Big Dipper, Beidou Qixing, which the ancient Chinese said our consciousness originates from. They gave us a direct point in the heavens where the Birkelin current powering our star originates from. I want to go into that in further depth and how they've turned the Big Dipper into a religion, the order of the Big Dipper, and how this transiting around the pole star has given us the icon of the cross. I'm going to be traveling around more temples, putting this information together, and I do appreciate you watching the video and measuring everything up with the ancient historical accounts and the numerology within the Chinese mysticism, 36%. I really wonder what's going to happen. You need to prepare yourself anyway. There's so many strange things going on planet-wide anyway. It would just be a good idea for you to have some emergency supplies around just in case the terrestrial weirdness of wars break out or a power grid does go down due to overusage in a cold event or just your day-to-day -day lives, let alone all the sun-earth effects that are about to be unleashed upon us. But I wish you all the best of luck. And as long as the power stays up, I'm going to keep bringing you videos like this, along with my regular ADAPT 2030 grand solar minimum effects on the planet of our weather, crop losses, etc. that we see. But I really want to start delving more into the ancient mythology, the mystery schools, the Taoist worship, and these different types of things that a lot of people are unfamiliar with in the West. I've been living out here for several years. This is what I'm studying. And I want to try to present you my findings to see how we can match with modern physics to see if we can get a true timeline going out for the intensification of the grand solar minimum because this will affect our societies as it has every time through history.